Yeah, we're, we're around like the middle of it. <laughs> Any episodes during the series? Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, it honestly feels like, yo, we're like not that far off from like my Osman just getting taken down because like there's so few places left this could actually go you know yeah well for some reason I thought I thought we were on in the home stretch where it ends but I forgot about an entire arc oh geez how could you forget about that arc <laughs> <laughs> like if it's the one I'm thinking of and not just like another arc in the real world <laughs> No, nah, it's it's everything that happens back in the digital world. <clears throat> oh boy. <laughs> but there's so much to that one, you know. I just forgot about it. Oh man. That's that's going to be a lot of fun when we get back there. <laughs> Cuz I remember like a few things. Everything I remember is just like, "Oh, hey, remember this crazy thing?" <laughs> Remember when, like, effing Puppet Mon did this thing and it was super censored? Yeah. And that other thing that was super censored? <laughs> so, yeah. When they foreshadow something with Kari and it never happens. I don't think I actually remember that. Like, yeah, the heck is that about? There's a weird... There's a weird part where I think it's like a bunch of Numamon are chanting something about Kari uh, being the yeah. chosen one or something. And like and like Kari is like in a trance, like she's possessed or something. Yeah. And then that episode ends and it's never mentioned again. Maybe the sub will have like more answers on that. Maybe, but I think it's just a plot line that they came up with and then dropped. Yeah, that's that feels like super possible, honestly. Triceramon. Trice it's like dark Tyrannomon. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. It's just like a random scene and I think it's like thirty-six or no, it's like thirty-five, I think. Yeah, it's like Mimi's dad just tries to like ram like dark Tyrannomon with this epic like tiny go-kart thing. <laughs> It's just like, wait, what? Alright. He's like, yo, a man's gotta do what a man's gotta do. And it's like, what sure. A, a boss. Man. Like, Mimi's parents are effing adorable. I kinda love them. Yeah, from the thumbnail, I thought it was uh, Triceramon because uh, I forgot that Triceramon was a thing. All right, yeah, yeah. Triceramon is a thing, yeah. Nah, not this arc. I don't think. Maybe they show up like later, but yeah. I don't know. I don't think I remember seeing a Triceramon ever in the anime. Oh really? Huh. It could be. I could just not remember. But yeah, I nothing's really spring to mind. But like, and that's like a weird thing because like I grew up with the games. So it's like, I remember Triceramon super hard, right? Maybe Triceramon is from one of the games initially. May like, I mainly remember that, like, you know, it was like, <clears throat> Digital World 3 is like the mountain zone, just like, you know, to like, the left of the city. And mm -hmm. like, you just go up there like, super early on. So it's like you always have more of like, oh hey, I'll like, explore this place. And you just run into a Triceramon. <laughs> And it's like, oh, but I've only got rookies, and this is an effing ultimate, holy crap. And yes, sometimes you can, like, escape, other times it one-shots you. But it's like the part of the game where you learn, like, real fast just how good speed can be. Because, like, multi-attacks do so much. <clears throat> okay, uh, it looks like it shows up in Adventure 2. Okay. It seems like that's the first time it shows up. I guess we'll see then. <laughs> and then its next form is a Zulongmon white. Wait, a Zulongmon? Yeah. It's, it's, it's one of the super crazy big deal Digimon. It's like a... Yeah, it's, what? It's, it's one of the holy dragons or whatever. 
It's like one of the four Davis or something. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. interesting. Huh. Okay, sure, I'll accept it. <laughs> right, so, yeah, Stark things off, like, I had, like, a segue, like, a minute ago, and it just died. Because I was yeah. going to be like, oh, yeah, speaking of Kari. <laughs> uh, oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. So this is the episode where we just suddenly get a big exposition dump about why Gaumon's a good guy and, like, why Wizardmon is, like, great and stuff. Fun fact, Wizardmon was my first favorite Digimon. Wizardmon's pretty rad, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> it's also the episode where, like, Wizardmon continuously gets damaged by falling, even though it can fly. Yeah. <laughs> I should... And... Our boy's not very strong, but, you know. Yeah, he, he does the best he can. <laughs> so yeah, Galvan's just, like, rambly spying on Kari. And she's just like, oh, why do, why do I feel this, like, attachment towards this person? Why, why couldn't I, like... In the sub, she's like, why couldn't I kill that girl? But they obviously changed that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, she's like, yo, yeah, let's go. And she's like, yo, I I remember back in the days of my youth, I used to, you know, I used to be waiting for someone. But then, like, my Osman found me and he, he didn't like my eyes, so, like, he beat me. And it was this, like, relationship of, like, physical abuse just constantly. Yeah. It's like, I kind of wish this got a bit more focused. This is like some crazy dark bullcrap. Yeah, it was, uh, I think it was like specifically because Gatomon was so defiant. Yeah, she has had like defiant uh, eyes to her or something. Yeah, or shows her as uh, Solomon, right? Yeah. Does it always show her? Like, fun fact, in the sub, that Digimon is called Plotmon. Plotmon? Yeah. Huh. Huh. Yeah, it's odd. What a terrible name. <laughs> yeah, like, she's like, oh, you, my Osma, like, beat me all the time, and, you know, I live this terrible life and all this stuff. And, like, Wizardmon just shows up for her. Basically, his, like, first real appearance in the series after just being in the background for, like, every other episode. Yeah. Like, once. It's like, oh, coincidentally, my Otis Mon is employed too, good-hearted Digimon. Yeah, Wizard Mon. Well, like, yeah, I guess this actually does make sense, because, like, yeah, Gaumon brought, like, all the, like, you know, crazy stronger Digimon into the game. Like, those were all her picks. Yeah. So it's like, you know... Alright, like, why is Wizardmon here? It's like, oh, right, because they're friends, so of course she'd, like, bring her friend into the real world, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Gotta, like, bring the people y'all trust, and, you know, yeah, Wizardmon seems pretty, like, like, a pretty good choice, all things considered. Like, knowing what he can effing do. <laughs> Yeah, Wizardmon just shows up, he's just like, Oh, hey, Gatomon, my friend, that we are just now revealing. Don't you remember that time when, like, I, like, in the dub he says he fell from the sky? <clears throat> and, like, the sub, he's just like, Oh, I was all alone, so no one helped me while I, like, just passed out from exhaustion. No idea why they really changed that, but sure, whatever. <laughs> fine just like oh hey like oh yeah i forgot gamon like takes off the glove for like a second weird <laughs> yeah that's that's very confusing honestly i mean it's not too confusing it's just not part of her body like if gamon takes off the glove d digivolves and then digivolves back does the glove return yeah, it probably just disappears. Okay. <laughs> that's like that's like some potential JoJo bullcrap. It's like, oh, I could just make this object you're trying to fight with disappear by, like, turning into a lesser form. 
Like whenever whenever Gatomon changes form, the glove just vanishes because yeah. when she turns into uh, spoilers, when she turns in, into Anjuomon later, like part of the evolution is her slipping out of the glove. Oh, is it? Uh, if I remember correctly, yeah. That's some interesting like implications, I guess. It it just says that it's not part of her body. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, this so wizard mod's just like, oh, hey, Galamon, you're my friend who, like, saved me that one time and, like, saved me from my loneliness. Let me now also, like, save you from your loneliness by, like, introducing that you have a pet owner. And Galamon's just like, what? Surprise, you're a good guy all along. He's like, oh, yeah, you're, like, the Digimon of, like... Well, first he says, like, I think, yo, you know... Well, no, alright. First he, like, just randomly finds the Digivice. Because, of course, he does. Mm -hmm. And, like, Wizard Mod's just, like, yo... Like, he's brought back, and, like, Dibby Dimon finds him, and he's just like, Hey, did you find anything? And Wizard Mod just turns around this, like, bottle of alcohol. And he's just... <laughs> Yeah, he's just like, oh, I found booze. Get wasted. <laughs> yeah, and the sub, he's very specifically like, oh, I like, I found out that the real world is too much fun, so I got a bit tipsy. And, like, doing Devimon's just like, ah, dang it, not again. <laughs> he's like, yeah, I really wish our forces did have so many just drunk losers around, you know? <laughs> And then Wizardmon goes upside his head because he's a champion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so Wizardmon's just like, oh, hey, Galvan, I found the Digivice, and I think, like, yo, we know where the eighth child is. And Gon's like, really? Where? And he's like, I think the eighth child resides within your heart. <laughs> and for some reason, that's like... Yeah, that's just the line, like, both versions. It's just, that's canon. <laughs> okay. Well, I think, I think the implication is, like, you know who it is. Yeah. Yeah, he's just, like, just flies Gaumon. Well, no, he just flies over his Gaumon, follows him to Kari. <laughs> and, yo, Wizard Wand's like, oh, hey, Kari, Gaumon might be your Digivon. And, like, the Digivice glows. And Gaumon's like, oh, man, I I'm such a good guy now. I can't believe how happy I am that I've, like, found my, like, you know, partner in all this. <laughs> and, like, Ty just shows up and he's just like, Oh, hey, what's going out there? Oh, crap, Godomon. And just, like, for some reason, I think Agumon shoots a fireball at Godomon, but nearly hits Kari and Godomon has to save her. So it just looks like Agma just like randomly shoots at Kari for some reason. <laughs> yeah, but you know it's because they assume that Gatomon's there to attack her. Yeah. So they obviously aimed at like the like target of like, you know, the hostage situation, I assume. <laughs> Cause like that's the only way that sequence of events kind of makes sense. <laughs> That or Agumon's aim is just effing terrible, which I'd also believe. What was Gatomon standing in front of Kari? Uh, she was standing, like, right next to her. Mm. But it was, like, off to the sides. Yeah, like, the directions don't quite add up, but sure, whatever. <laughs> like, you know, point taken, like, you know, Gatomon's a good guy. <laughs> I really wish we could have had this, like, you know, character development unfold throughout this arc and stuff, just, like, all right now in, like, the span of, like, five minutes. It's fine. Yeah, it's like... Ah, that's sort of like the third of this arc, because it's like, I understand the choice that it's like, yo, oh, hey, like, we have to, like, yo, actually make these forms stretch out a bit more. So, like, let's just go from, like, this, you know, like, Monster of the Week format to more of, like, a character drama type of situation. But it's, like, yeah, these arcs aren't, like, handled as gracefully as I kind of, like, would want them to be, I think. 
Okay, it's like, we're getting all this stuff that's, like, not focused on Godomon when, like, she's kind of, like, the main thing of this arc right now. I mean, I'll... I say it any time there's something that's, like... No, that's like, oh, this, scene, this arc or scene is very deep or whatever. And I'm always gonna say, well, it's for kids. They don't care, but... And, uh, I, like, like, I understand. <clears throat> like, even as, like, you know, a scene have like, for kids, I feel like it could be, like, a bit better, you know? Because, mm -hmm. like, yeah, this could have been, like, built up, you know? Like, not that, like, building up this scene would have, like, made it, like, less for kids. And, uh, it's like, we could give, we could have, like, got a lot more with Gaumon, yo. We could have had, like, more of a satisfying conclusion to the whole, like, search for the eighth child thing, yo. Like, Dragon Ball Z's, like, also for kids, and their whole, like, treasure hunt arc, or, like, on Namek, is, like, things in that kind of, like, feel like they're, like, you know, like they happen for more of a reason, right? If that kind of mm -hmm. makes sense. Yeah, but <clears throat> like I'm not saying that Dragon Ball Z doesn't exist to sell toys, but it feels way more like Digimon is meant is trying to sell toys than Digimon, yeah. Dragon Ball Z. Uh well, I guess like that's sort of like where I stance is right now. It's like yeah, sure, this show is kind of like you know it's meant for kids. It's meant to like sell toys and stuff. If I'm just sort of, like, just examining it just, like, as me with, like, my adult brain, because I'm watching it. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, yeah, I guess, yeah. like, screw the children. <laughs> now that I think about it, Dragon Ball Z might not have been meant to sell toys. Because it, because it was Toriyama's manga at first. And it's just an adaptation. Yeah. Like, Dragon Ball Z was, like, meant <laughs> to sell, like, you know, manga volumes, which is, like, yeah, eh. I'm eh, yeah. it's sort still, of... it's, still, <clears throat> it's still to sell the actual product and not like a toy of it. Yeah, <laughs> but still, like you know, it, it's a, it's a bit in there, I guess. Just like oh hey, how what colorful characters can we introduce to like sell jump volumes? Oh hey, here's a bunch of colorful Ginyu Force members. All right, sure. <laughs> Yeah, but people already just like the series because Toriyama did a good job with Dragon Ball. Yeah. They they weren't needing to like he wasn't needing to write to pull in new viewers, although I'm sure I'm sure that they wanted that. But well, like Toriyama already had a thing that people liked. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Also a sort of thing that's like, yeah, I feel like it'd be like kind of ignorant if they didn't at least like, you know sort of, like, understand that, like, toy sales would be a thing, you know? Because, like, at least, like, you know, later on in the series, it's just, like, Dragon Ball's not really, like, about the toys, but it's, like, yeah, you you'd know that they're making money off of it. Sure. I'm just saying that probably, that was probably, like, I can't speak for it because I don't actually know, but I kind of doubt Toriyama had that as the main focus. Yeah, I mean, that's fair, I guess. He just wanted to write his story, and maybe his editors pushed for him to yeah, uh, make colorful characters to attract people or whatever, but... Well, what we know is that at least did, like, a little bit, because, like... Yeah. Yeah, they're very specifically like, oh, hey, like, androids 19 and 20, these guys are kind of, like, lame, can you, like, make a bar villain? Yeah, it's like, no one cares like, about oh, this old guy. Yeah, and they're like, oh, it's just these kids, and he made Cell, and they're like, oh, but when does he transform? And Toriyama's like, okay, fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Man. Like, I yeah. I, I would have been fine with Imperfect Cell as the full-on actual villain. Like, I'm cast split on, because, like, the final design is pretty good. But, like, at the same time, it's, like, eh, there's, like, a lot of bullcrap they have to go through to, like, justify it. And it's just, like, eh, yeah, this could be, like, eh. Like, they get to perfect sell because Vegeta just, like, screws up, basically. And, like, nothing really comes of that. Vegeta's oh, well, just, that... like, alright, messed up, well, you know, here's what we have to deal with now. Not even. 
Vegeta lets it happen. Yeah. Because of his pride, which is totally in character. It's just like... <laughs> like, I never got the impression... Uh, like, as a kid, I never got the impression that, like, everything was being changed. Like... Well, yeah, as yeah, a kid. Injured. Yeah. Well, as, a, as an adult, if you didn't know that story, you wouldn't know either. And as an adult, I'd just be sitting there like, why is Vegeta such an idiot? Which is kind of like its own, like, flaw, I think. Well, everyone wonders why... I mean, there is no question of why he's an idiot. It's his pride. And yeah. like I said, his, he, he's always been prideful to a fault. Why is Vegeta mm -hmm. just, like, risking his wife's son and, like, the entire planet on this idea that he could beat something that kills him in the future? Because he's supremely confident that it won't beat him. Well, no, it's not, like, the thing that kills him in the future. It's the thing that kills the thing that killed him in the future. But and it's, I, like, two I, stages I, beyond that. What I'm saying is Vegeta lets it happen under the assumption that he that uh, Perfect Cell still won't be a match for him. And then Perfect Cell beats the ever-loving crap out of him. It. That's always gonna be, like, just such a huge contrivance, you know? <laughs> Just like, oh, hey, we the enemy to, like, get stronger. It's like, okay, well, you know, just have this hero just, like, do something really stupid to push them into that position. Like, the bad guy's just sitting there, it's like, hey, you sure about this, you know? You sure I should be doing this? And the hero's just like, yeah, no, go ahead, you know, just eat all these rare candies. It's fine. Get to level 100. I'll wait for you. I mean, it's not even the first time Goku threw a Sinzu bean to sell. Yeah, that's also kind of dumb. Like, and, like, Goku threw a Sinzu bean to cell, and Trunks held back because he knew he was stronger than Vegeta at the time, and he didn't want to hurt his pride. Oh, gee, just, just yeah, incompetent decisions it. everywhere, holy crap. Yeah, yeah, that was a thing. Trunks was very capable of taking out, uh, taking out a uh, semi-perfect cell and, like, whoever. And he just didn't because he didn't want to hurt Vegeta's pride. Uh, <laughs> like, all Saiyans are such effing idiots. Holy crap. Like, I know yeah. it's like saying, oh, yeah, water is what, but still. Jeez. Yeah, no, Saiyans are idiots. <laughs> Anyways, Digimon... <laughs> <clears throat> so like this like just solved the like entire race for the eighth child in like one episode or the course of like five minutes and, and like Otis two flashbacks my Otis Mon proving himself to be extremely incompetent <laughs> yeah like to be fair my Otis Mon is going under like the assumption that like his minions knew what the F they were doing yeah. he's just yeah, he's like, how hard could this be? You know, just wave the thing around, just walk through the streets. Like, you know, you have to find them eventually, right? Well, also, seemingly, he's, uh, all, like, most of his minions are probably under his control because of fear. Like, yeah. it's kind of stupid of him to assume that any number of them wouldn't turn against him. <laughs> like, as to be fair, it's like most of them are completely on his side. It's just like Godomon and Wizardmon, you know? <laughs> we don't know that. They might only be working for him because he coerced them into it. We just yeah, but yeah. That's the case with Godomon. Yeah, like most of the time it like works out though. Like, yo. Know, <laughs> like Dark Terayamon's not gonna turn against this guy. He seems like pretty confident. <laughs> Oh, sure, but even... <laughs> I like how I just mentioned that as, like, just an offhand example, and it's the one time it actually happens for, like, other reasons. Wait, what? <laughs> eh, whatever, we'll get there. Well, I was, I was just gonna say, Gatsumon and, uh... Gatsumon and Pumpkinmon were his subordinates, and they, they just went there and started screwing around. Oh, right, yeah, I forgot about them. Jeez. <laughs> Yeah, so it's like... What a heroic sacrifice they were. It's like, my Otis Mon, why are you so utterly incompetent? 
<laughs> it's just like, yeah, I assume like the ability to like kill these guys at any second would make them all work with me. But like for some reason they keep making really dumb moves by trying to turn against me. Pumpkin Mon and Gatsumon go screwing around. Uh, <laughs> Wizard Mon goes grab some booze and gets drunk and Gatomon fully fully turns on him. <laughs> like to be fair, he does actually get drunk, it's just like a ruse. Oh. Yeah, he just pulls out the ball like, oh, I'm afraid I got drunk this time, and Dewey Devimon's like, ah, idiot. Oh. Like, ah, I'm just messing with you. <laughs> but yeah, so like, jeez. Yeah, like, my time has been, I more like think of like effing like Skull Miramon and like Mammoth Mon and stuff, you know? <laughs> yeah, they're probably not gonna turn against him. Yeah. <laughs> Like, Tuskvon seems pretty securely rooted on, like, Team Dark. Still, there's just so many instances of Digimon turning against him, you would think he would take a more active role in searching. Yeah. Instead, he's going out into parks and sucking the blood of random women. Like... Actually, there's kind of, like, a reason for that, because he's just like, Oh yeah, I need to get more powerful if I'm gonna, like, fight these things. Makes and, sense. like, yeah, we see him get more powerful. And then he does something that probably required him to be way more powerful. And it's, like, the most effective thing he does in the entire series. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, so Ty's just sitting there. It's like, oh, man, can we really trust Godomon? And Wizard Bond's like, yeah, don't worry. We'll, like, handle this. You know, we have to, like, the tag back. So, you know... Just leave this to me. We got this. It's fine. Garamon's good guy now. Yeah. So, like, Wizard Mon and Garamon just, like, rush off. And then it's like, they found Bakamon and just hypnotize it to, like, give them the key and leave them alone. <laughs> and it's like, oh, yeah, that's neat. Like, you know, Wizard Mon's just using his, like, wizard powers in, like, clever ways. Yeah. Yeah, he's like, you know, he's not just, like, an effing, like, lightning ball guy. Like, he's got other, like, spells and stuff, too, you know? It's like, yeah, alright. So, yeah, they, like, go to Myosmon's, like, coffin, because they're just like, okay, well, Myosmon obviously, like, keep this thing in his home. Because he basically told us that one time that that's what he's doing. <clears throat> and they like go on the coffin and wizard mon's like yeah don't worry we have plenty of time <laughs> so they open the coffin they like they get the real tag and crest out which are like for some reason in the same place and not like hidden in different locations and like my Osmon just shows up and wizard mon's like oh crap we didn't have time for this <laughs> But it's like, we do at least learn that, like, the crest that Wizardmon finds is the real one. And, like, my Osmon had, like, the fake or whatever. It's so, like, my Osmon just, like, throws them out of his lair and just starts, like, beating the crap out of him. <clears throat> and, like, Ty's just like, oh, we should, like, help with that crap because it seems like something's going down. So, like, he sits, like, Mel Greymon out. It fires, like, one missile, and then D-Digivolves. And my mod's just like, oh, well, screw you then. I'm so tired, uh. <laughs> yeah. Like, at least in the sub they explain it, because, you know, Ty's just like, oh man, Agumon must be, like, wore out, because he's just been, like, fighting things non-stop since we got to the real world. And it's like, you know what? Fair enough. Like, how many times has Agumon had to go ultimate so far? More than, like, twice. Like, honestly. <clears throat> and, like, he's still getting used to the whole thing. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, sure, why not? <laughs> See, like, my Osmon, like, he drops Wizardmon and hurts him. And they, like, picks Wizardmon up again. It drops this Digimon who can effing fly, like, into the lake. <laughs> and, like, Wizardmon's just like, oh, crap, I, I can fly, but I'm still drowning for some reason. <laughs> it's gotta be, it's gotta be drama, man. 
Yeah. Like, of the, the sub mon specifically says, you know, like, oh, Garmon's like the eighth Digidustin's child. Alright, then I'm just gonna send your friend to hell. <laughs> and, like, he does that by just dropping him in a body of water. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> sure. Data is heavier than water, I guess. But it can be lighter than air. <laughs> <laughs> so like <laughs> yeah Gamma's just like dude I have to like I have to beat my Osmon or I'll never regain my like pride as a Digimar whatever and like my Osmon just like takes Gatomon and he just leaves Agumon like Ty behind even though he could totally just kill Ty right now so yeah that's like the part of like his plan I totally don't get at all <laughs> It's like, yeah, it's like, all right, yeah, we're gonna like find the eighth child and kill them before they have a Digimon. All it's like, okay, that's fine. Why can't you kill children's number one through seven? Because the eighth one's the important one. But like, Ty is right there though. Like, you could, you could just, just like Crimson Whip. He'd like, he won't stand a chance. I mean, I, I don't know what to tell you, man. My response's an idiot. <laughs> it's like, like, how many bites from, like, Grizzly Wing could <laughs> Ty take as, like, a child? <laughs> Probably less than you could throw. <laughs> yeah, so we leave on the big cliff here of, like, oh, no, my Osmond, they, like, they stole Gatomon, and, like, how the heck will we deal with this? Jeez. See, so yeah, that's... That's a thing. <laughs> like, I at least appreciate how, like, active my Osman has been, but holy crap. Took him a while. Yeah, it took him a bit, but, you know, now that he's, like, eat all those, like, you know, like, bodies and, like, you know, just fed enough. Like, now he's just, like, out, just like, alright, I'm just gonna, like, take care of everything. Like, that, like, you know, like, the day's over, I'm just gonna be the biggest threat ever and get crap done. Except, except for when I don't. Yeah, except when I don't kill the Digidestined. Oh, uh, jeez. The... Are they, in the sub, are they just called, like, the Chosen Ones or something? I think they do use Digidestined, but, like, I'm not sure. I thought Digidestined was, like, dubism. It might be, like... I, kn I know they call them the Chosen Ones, but, like, I don't know, the two terms are, like, so interchangeable, I haven't been paying much mind to it, really. Okay. Because just like, oh, yeah, it's Chosen One, did you dust in? Yeah, yeah, whatever. <laughs> yeah, so... Yeah, that's something... Like, this is the part of the series where, like, the episodes just sort of bleed together a lot. It's so, like, episode 35, like, I forget if we open on this or what, but, like, we just see Palmon drinking through her roots, and it's effing upsetting, because they're, like, weird tubes coming off of her leg. <laughs> it's, it's her roots. It's like, eh. Being you know, like Mimi's parents just sort of like show up and they're just like, oh hey Mimi, come home. And she's like, alright. You know, and she like hides Palmon because she's like, oh yeah, Palmon's like, yo, you don't really suit my aesthetic because you're just a plant. So why don't my parents to think I'm lame? <laughs> I think lame <laughs> She's like, you know, looks at Palma like, yeah, no offense, I still don't want to be caught with anything as lame as you right now. <laughs> and Palma's like, oh, I'm not lame. And Lily, she's just like, yeah, nah, nah, it's, it's fine. You're fine. But you are lame, though. <laughs> Can't let anybody think I'm into plants. <laughs> yeah. Like, if you like plants, you're a lame -o. <laughs> Yeah, that, that'd be terrible. <laughs> yeah. Stupid. I think plants gross. What's wrong with you? 
uh, yeah, like, episode 35. This one's, it's kind of interesting, because, like, in the dub, it's like, it's, you know, the music is sort of, like, done normally, right? So it just sort of, like, lingers on. You said in the dub it, it's normal? Yeah. Okay. But yeah, it's like, feels like a lot of shots kind of, like, linger and, like, you know, a lot of, like, nothing's kind of happening. Mm-hmm. In the sub, it's like, it's playing this sort of, like, flute melody. And it's just sort of, like, off and on throughout the episode. And it's like, you know, it's, like, way weirder, like, just because, like, they changed the music out, you know? And it's supposed to be like, oh yeah, my Osman's like orchestrating this situation. You're seeing all these like pieces come together or whatever. Yeah, it's just one of those situations where it's like just the choice of music just changes each scene just so dramatically. Cause like in the sub, it's like, oh yeah, like yo, soft, like yo, kind of like some dude flute music in the background that's kind of like hypnotic. Kind of mm-hmm. contrasted against, like, all this kind of, like, you know, terrible stuff sort of, like, going on. And all these things kind of, like, you know, starting to happen. They're all, like, linked to disaster, right? Mm-hmm. But, like, you know, in the dub, it's just, like, oh, it's just scored like a normal episode. So it's, like, you know, it doesn't have the same impact at all. <laughs> See, instead we just get, like, my Osman summons, like, this fog around the city and, like, you know, just screws with communication for, like, five minutes as various Digidestin just screw around. And it's, like, the tension just isn't really there. Because, like, the musical change just, like, screwed it over, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that's definitely interesting to kind of, like, see about. This is the one where they get, uh, like, captured, basically, right? Yeah, because, like, my Osman puts, like, a fog barrier around the entire city with, like, all that power gained from, like, just drinking women. (laughs) So, like, you know, communications are screwed. Like, no one can leave the town. Like, you know... I assume it's, like, Silent Hill, like, you just get lost in the mist and just come back or whatever. Like, boats are down, no one can escape. It's magical fog, yeah. Yeah. You know, he's just like, oh, the eighth child is, like, around here? Alright, well, here's the search area. Like, no one can leave this zone. I'm just gonna round up every person I can possibly find and just, like, figure this out. (laughs) So, like, meanwhile, Matt's dad is just out doing things. A, like, meets Dark Tyrannomon, and then it just leaves after looking super nuts. And they get attacked by, like, Gizamon, who, like, round them up. And we cut to, like, you know, the rest of the city as people are just being, like, effing captured and just brought in by effing ghosts. Led by, like, effing Phantomon. <laughs> Yes, so. <laughs> like back of Phantom are just patrolling the streets, spooking the fuck out of people. <laughs> I mean, granted, that's all they have to do. They're ghosts. Yeah, they're spooky. Like we see the whole like Bakuman can disguise themselves as like people thing, kind of like come back because they're like they're ringing doorbells and then like showing up at the door in disguise to like burst out. And just, like, round people up to, like, capture the eighth child. And, like, you know, they're not, like, it's not like they're in for, like, specific age groups are. They're just taking everyone. It's just, like, now nah, you see a person, bring them here. We'll, like, deal with it later. <laughs> yeah, we just, uh, just to be safe. Yeah. Like, I at least like to think it's because, like, my Osman doesn't fully understand what a child is. So he's just like, I don't know, like, you know, is, is like TK's mom a child? I don't know, she might be. Let's just throw her on the pile. Yeah, let's just, let's just pile on to my Otis Mon stupidity. That, that, that's fun. <laughs> just like, all right, all right, my ghost will do this for me. <laughs> yeah, so like... 
a thing. Yeah, Beaumont saves, like, Sora's mom by, like, shooting out, like, a spiral twister. And Sora's mom is like, did that plushie of yours just shoot, like, a beam of spiral energy at this army of ghosts? He's like, yeah. Yeah, she's like, oh yeah, also I can talk, by the way. It's like, oh, alright. We, like... We see Mimi's, like, family, and, like, Mimi's mom is just an effing weirdo. <laughs> and it's like, alright, yeah, that's fun. I don't remember, is Mimi's mom also kind of, like, ditzy and goofy? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Like, I think the idea is that she's very kind of, like, cute and demanding or something. But yeah... So, like, effing, like, Sora and, like, Sora's mom just, like, get out and, like, Beaumont and Sora's mom somehow get, like, Bakamon disguises. <laughs> they, just cut some, they just cut some sheets. <laughs> yeah, sure, why not? I and mean, that's all it is. Yeah. It's just a formless mass with a sheet on top of it. <laughs> yeah, like... Ty and, like, Agumon just show up and Ty's like, alright, gotta save my mom. And he just goes out with, like, Greymon, just riding this Dassor with Kari. And, like, Phantomon just shows up and just, like, cuts Greymon's arm. And he's like, oh, crap, this ain't working, yo. Know, like, Ty's just like, alright, turn this dinosaur around. We gotta get the F out of here. Phantomon's <laughs> an ultimate, right? Yeah, Phantomon's an ultimate. <laughs> okay, I thought so. Be yeah, like, Phantomon's also weird, because, like, you know, in the dub, he sounds like a traditional spook, I guess. Mm -hmm. yeah, he's just like, oh, I'm going to get you, yo. The spooky ghost. <laughs> yeah, and, like, the sub, his voice is very kind of, like, high-pitched and scratchy. <laughs> like, very kind <laughs> of, like, chicken-sounding. <laughs> <laughs> like, he weirdly sounds goofier in, like, the, like, original sub-version. Because he sounds like Scratch or something, you know, from, like, the Sonic Sat AM cartoon. <laughs> uh, that's great. <laughs> it's like, yeah, bring those children over here fast! <laughs> A thing. <laughs> this, like... Sora's trying to escape the ghosts, and she finds a guy with a quote-unquote mind-over-matter-like cassette tape he's listening to. <laughs> like, in the sub, it's just like, oh yeah, he just listens to, like, Buddhist prayers when he gets nervous, so he just took this with him. Yeah, but of course, it's the in the dub, it's like, nah. Yeah, mind-over-matter. So, like... I can't take what they do at the top, cause Sora's like, alright guys, listen to me, and she just like, just runs out with like, the like, effing speaker, just like, blasting Pokemon, lose your power, and like, she has like, all the people behind her like, chanting it with her. It's like, we've weaponized this effing chant to beat these ghosts. <laughs> like, this is the ultimate anti-spook weapon right here. <laughs> uh. So yeah, they're all like, things are kind of working, like, people are like at least punching these ghosts out, you know, and they're like being them with sticks and like making progress. <laughs> and like, meanwhile, like, effing like, Mimi's parents are just like, you know, sitting there, and they're just like, oh, we have to escape. And, like, Mimi's dad, just, like, no, first of all, it's like, Mimi's, like, yeah, someone tries to, like, Mimi's dad to do something, and Mimi's mom is just like, oh, no, don't let him go, you know, he's too precious, we have to protect him. And she, like, makes this big scene and cries, because she's like, no, like, you know, I don't want my husband to die, or whatever. And they're just like, alright, fine, we'll send someone else, sheesh. <laughs> but yeah, then, like, Mimi's dad just, like, sees effing Dark Tyrannomon, and he's just like, no, I gotta do this as a man. I'm a random. 
<laughs> yeah, he's like, I'm a rainless thing, and then everything will work out. Aw, yeah. <laughs> so Figmi's dad just, like, just tries to ram effing dark to ram on with an effing, like, some kind of, like, airport cart of some kind. Oh, it's like a, it's like a luggage, it's like a luggage thing. Oh my gosh. <laughs> And he just, like, just sees this massive effing, like, dark, just, like, dinosaur monster. And he's like, yeah, I can take it. Screw this guy. <laughs> oh, man. He's like, you, you're no match for it. You're going down. <laughs> and it works. And no, no, he's like, he gets slapped out of the way. It's no big deal. Yeah, I mean, he's desperate, so of course he's gonna try something crazy. <laughs> I just love the fact that he's just like, Yeah, I got this crap! Leave it to me! He just has the dumbest plan ever. And it's just like, he's just so done so. He's like, No, nah, this is gonna work! <laughs> Man, at least he tried something. Yeah. So it's like Togemon just starts like trying to punch out Dark Taramon and it's doing like the fat kid windmill technique. <laughs> Which, honestly, fair enough. We have seen Togemon box the crap out of Ultimates before. Yeah. <laughs> but nah, Dark Taramon's just a bit too much. Like, I assume mostly because it's a fire type. Got the type advantage. Yeah, it's just lighting her on fire and crap. It's like Mimi's just like, you know, it's this dramatic where she's like, oh, why can't I do anything? Like, the tear falls down. And you see, like, the crest glow, and, yo, know, she just, like, turns Togemon into its, like, ultimate form of, like, Lilymon. And yeah. Lilymon just comes out. And she's like, hey, yo, know, just start shooting out, like, flower can stuff. And it's like... Man, Lilymon's, like, introduction is effing weird. Because she spends a lot of time just flying around and launching ineffective attacks. You know, and she's like, oh, hey, am I more to your taste, Mimi? And Mimi's like, yeah, you're awesome. <laughs> you're not lame at all now. <laughs> uh, I, I guess I can kind of see where the logic is. Because Palmon's, like, Palmon's not... I guess Palmon has a flower on her head, but otherwise she's more like just a just a weird plant. Yeah, Palmon's not cute. And then Togemon's a big a big cactus with boxing gloves. Which is awesome, but still. Yeah, it's cool. But it's not <laughs> it's not Mimi style, I guess. And then she yeah. turns into like a, a flower pixie and it's like, oh, okay. Yeah. Like Ah, maybe it's supposed to be, it's like, oh yeah, it's like the ugly champion turning into, like, the pretty ultimate or something, but it's like, yeah, it's like, yeah, whatever, yeah. <laughs> and I think, I think Palamon's design is probably, it's pretty good. Yeah. Palamon and Togemon's designs, uh, for, uh, strictly from a standpoint of trying to keep, uh, their target audience is probably male children, like yeah. little boys. So, you don't want, the, like, the, some of the Digimon to be overly girly. Yeah. So, Palmon and Togemon are pretty neutral looking. And then Lilymon yeah. shows up, and it's like, oh, that's really girly, but at this point, they're already invested. Yeah. Well, I guess it's like, you don't want them to be overly girly, but at the same time, yo, you do love characters that are overly girly, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Well, there's the, yeah. the meaning. <laughs> But yeah, I actually kind of wonder if, like, they got a complaint about that or something. Like, some kid was just running to the company, just like, you know, just some random, like, you know, girl or something. Just like, hey, why isn't Mimi's Digimon cuter? No, make it cuter, though. I mean, yeah, Japan loves, uh, Japan's not afraid of making the characters cute. They, uh, they embrace that kind of thing. yeah. So maybe, so, you know, maybe I'm just speculating for nothing, you know? <laughs> yeah. I feel like that's more like, you know, just sort of like the, like, Western sort of, like, you know... Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking in yeah. terms of Western fan bases. It's like, oh, uh, hey, like, you know, like, teenage boys don't want to get... Well, I guess, like, preteen boys more specifically. It's like, where, like, 
kid boys don't want to get invested in, like, a show with, like, the girl character. Because the girl character is always the worst, right? And you, like, look at the actual statistics, and it's like, no, like, girls actually like this crap, too. Like, we should be expanding our audience, actually. (laughs) Yeah. Digimon seems like a show that can be enjoyed by anybody, because... Yeah. (laughs) There's plenty of cute Digimon, and there's plenty of cool Digimon. (laughs) Like, what... (laughs) Like, what little girl doesn't like to see, like, a giant orange dinosaur just fire-breathing the crap out of people? I mean... <laughs> up, in, up until Metal Greymon, Agumon's Digivolution line is pretty cute, I would argue. Like, Greymon? <laughs> yeah. Like, like as far as a, like a bigger, stronger dinosaur goes? Yeah. Like I would, I would say it only be, starts to become "quote unquote" ugly uh, <laughs> when it starts strapping metal to itself. Jeez, and then it turns into effing like War Greymon, which is just cool. Metal, yeah, like Metal Greymon and War Greymon just kind of transition into like just straight up cool territory. Nah, <laughs> like they've got like Wigarumon for that, you know. Because, like, we all know what Weirgarumon's about. Uh, it's that hard it's... edge. Weirgarumon's cool. <laughs> it's like, the, uh, we're just gonna make, like, a wolf Digimon who's, like, piercings and, like, ripped jeans. Heck and he yeah. has, like, one sleeve but no shirt. 90s werewolf. Oh yeah. <laughs> I... I, I still stand by uh, my disappointment that where Garumon goes back to being quadrupedal. Yeah, where Garumon X really should be like the final form of like that line, because yeah. it's just yeah. It's because like you you lose the ability to do more things when you can't use your hands. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so Pixie Ball just shows up and just shoots a bunch of effective attacks. And she just spins around, like, Dark Terramon's neck and, like, makes a flower wreath that, like, makes him quote-unquote nice. Oh, yeah. So she's just like, yeah, he's one of ours now. You know, he's, like, now he's friendly. <laughs> and it's like, oh, dang it. Like, Pixie Mon does even, like, defeat her own opponent in their fight. Lilymon. Lilymon, right. Man, Lilymon got shafted so hard. <laughs> Cause like she only had to defeat her own like upon that she like digivolves to stop. And then like the next fight she has immediately comes, and it's like Myotismon, so of course she gets wrecked. Well, and that's probably uh... the last good thing she will ever do of note. In the uh, on the Digimon Wiki, Flower Wreath is one of her abilities. Jeez, and, it, and it, it does exactly what it did in the show. It like pacifies Digimon. Yeah, uh, zips around an enemy and ties them up with a rope of vines of flowers. This attack can counteract digital viruses and make certain Digimon obey its command. Yeah. Like, that's a cool idea, but she's not really using it for, like, anything cool, you know? It's just like, oh yeah, we win, like, command this Dark Terramon. It's like, alright, are we gonna use this thing to try and, like, you know, fight off the Phantomon or, like, save someone's parents or something? And it's like, nope. Also, mm, also Lilymon's a, a data type. And yeah. Dark Tyranimon's a virus type. Interesting. <laughs> like I get the I get the idea the flower reef specifically counters viruses, but yeah. she's got such a type disadvantage. So maybe maybe it's less that it's like, oh, uh, we're not gonna do anything with it, and more like this is the only way I could beat it. And <laughs> like types haven't really been like a problem with the rest of the series, I feel like. Cause like <laughs> And I feel like if you look at it, you'd probably, like, find some situation where it's, like, oh, yeah, like, effing, you know, like, War Gravon beats, like, this Digimon, but it's, like, Data or whatever. But, yeah, that did happen. Shogun Gekomon, why, right? 
Uh, Wasn't Shogun Gekumon data? Shogun Shogun Gekumon's a virus. Wait. Okay, yeah, yeah, you're right. And like, crap, what was like where Garumon's type? Because <clears throat> I know Wait, he beats the... Digitomamon. It lists Shogun Gekumon as both, both virus and data. Interesting. I guess it just depends on what game it's in, or, or what show, or whatever. Yeah. Huh. Everything I've seen Shogun Gekumon in, he's a virus. Yeah. Eh, whatever. <laughs> so, if you, do you think, like, if Lilymon could have got that flower wreath around, like, Myosmon's neck, <laughs> would that just be end of series? <laughs> It's like, oh, hey, my Osmon's just a good guy now. We did it. Well, it does say it only works on certain Digimon, which is how they get around that. <laughs> but could affect my Otismon, though. Nope, because it only works on certain Digimon. <laughs> I'm, I'm certain that would be the answer you would get if you ask the writers of the show. That's like... I just love the idea, it's like, yeah, she just uses on, like, my but it just says, like, the Persona 5 moment, you know? Of just, like, oh my gosh, I've done so many terrible things. <laughs> you know, he's like, oh, this, there's no way I can make up for what I've done to Gatomon. <laughs> and Gamon just looks over and she's like, I still won't beat this guy, though. <laughs> no, just, just let me do it, though. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's try to wrap it up because I gotta go to the yeah. bathroom. <laughs> okay, but yeah, so Lilymon just like beats Dark Taramon, and like he immediately gets like take out by my Osmon. Insert cliffhanger. All right, so thirty six. So thirty six. <laughs> All right, so yeah, my Osmon just like fights Lilymon. A just beats her with, like, some dark heart attack or something. Which, in the sub, is kind of horrific. Because, <laughs> like, Lilymon just, like, shrieks this, like, freaking terrifying, like, just, like, you know, just horrible-sounding, like, scream as he does it to her. And Dang. it's like, jeez. <laughs> Lilymon gets it rough. And, like, um... Yeah, they, like, keep going, like, we cut to Izzy's house, and he's just like, oh, I need to put up this digital barrier, and his mom's like, no, don't, we have to get up here, or we're going to die, and Izzy's like, nah, trust me, ma, I got this. So he, like, gets up the barrier by, like, completing his, like, you know, parent's character arc, and, like... Kind of amusingly, it's like, oh, the barrier doesn't keep ghosts out, it just keeps them from seeing them. And, like, that's their version of, like, a quote-unquote barrier. Oh, yeah. And it's like, huh. Alright, that's neat. But yeah, they, like, get out of there and, you know, Tillman just talks, which knocks Izzy's mom out. Because she's just like, oh my gosh, it's so much. I, I always <clears throat> I think I said it before, but I always appreciate Digimon for being the series where the kids eventually reveal their fantastical partners to their parents or whatever. Yeah. Like, they're not trying to conceal their identities the whole time, because it would be silly at some point to keep trying. Yeah, just like most of the time. <laughs> And, like, and, the, and the, the best part is typically the parents are pretty okay with it. Yeah, generally speaking. <laughs> like, she passes out, but she's like, alright, you know, I trust this bug monster my son has. Yeah. Like, this is not going to turn out nearly as terribly <laughs> as goddamn superhero did. <laughs> well, like, and it, it's like, a. <clears throat> I just assume that it means the parents are smart because yeah. like because it's like well apparently they've been hanging out with my kid for a while and they haven't killed them they're probably okay yeah 
This definitely ain't gonna be a Brightburn situation. <laughs> Where it's like, our, like, you know, this fantastical thing we found just ends up being, like, super evil and, like, destroying everything. Yeah. Yeah, so, like... Uh, they get the barrier up and they, like, go off, like... Demi Devimon reveals he has, like, hypnotic eye powers for some reason. And he just puts, like, a crowd of people asleep, and it's like, uh, alright. I to guess you do this now. To the wiki. Oh, jeez. Is that, like, a thing in the wiki? Uh. Eh? The closest he has to that is Evil Whisper, which is Chance and Casts a Curse. Maybe that's it? Technically, it could be it. Yeah. Um, also, he has a move called Butt Smasher. Butt Smasher? Attacks the enemy with numerous bats. Huh? Wait, what? <laughs> Wait, what? Excuse me. <laughs> it's called Butt Smasher. Well, the normal, the nor, uh, the, that's the dubbed version, I guess. The, the original version is called Bat Flutter. Why? Why would you change that to Butt Smasher? The, the implication is so much worse. I don't know. <laughs> does Does he just like use on someone's like butt or something? Like what? I, I have no idea. Also, he has two separate attacks. One for Demi Dart and one for Demi Darts. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess now we know why it got censored. I think yeah. Demi Dart is fine. Demi Darts, though? Nah, cut that. <laughs> or uh, Pico Dart. And, or Pico Darts. Oh, man. Because his Japanese name is Pico Debimon. Jeez. Uh, yeah, for some reason they felt the need to separate uh, of uh, two versions, one where he throws one and one where he throws multiple. <laughs> Fair enough, I guess. <laughs> now, like, the only Abiyomon with that is just Demi Dart, not Demi Darts. Huge distinction. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I guess Demi Darts would be the more dangerous one because he's throwing a bunch of them. <laughs> oh, man. I don't know why they felt the need to separate it into two separate attacks, though. <laughs> See, like, we have, like, a weird line around this part where, like, my Osmond's just, like, you know, just flying around watching over all these, like, guys he's captured. And, like, Dippy Delimon's like, hey, why don't you just kill, like, every single person here and just be done with it? And, of course, Dippy Delimon is right. <laughs> and my Osmond's just sitting there is like, nah, that wouldn't suit my aesthetic. <laughs> Which wait, wait. does he say that? In the sub he does. In the dub they just glance over the whole thing. I'm more refined than that. Shut up. <laughs> He's like, I'm not like a mass serial killer. I just killed Digimon every other episode. <laughs> It's like, my Otis Vaughn, you're just cementing yourself as being even dumber and dumber every ep uh, every moment. It's just like... Like, I guess I at least can have Seawoy's gig at. Because, like, his, like, alternative is to basically make Godomon, like, pick the, like, eighth child out just to, like, punish her. So I guess he's just being, like, really petty and vengeful, but still... I guess, but he could also just guarantee success and just kill everyone. How many people could he probably kill with one use of Bloodstream slash Crimson Lightning? A whole bunch. Probably like, you know, about 20, maybe 30. I mean, Hopefully like 50-ish. If we're just talking normal people, I'm sure he could wipe out that entire uh, airport. <laughs> yeah. Just like, yeah, it might take, like, what, like, five swings? Six, maybe? <laughs> yeah, it'd be no big deal. I mean, his, his move Grizzly Wing just summons a crapload of bats. He can just swarm yeah. everybody with it easy. 
How many bats would it take to kill one person? I mean, probably just one. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> We've seen these things eat pumpkins. They're pretty aggressive. Yeah. Well, I th I'm thinking, like, on a normal person, like, not being defended by a Digimon, like, one. Yeah. Because they're, like, they're, like, uh, attack bats, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> They're very dangerous attack bats. Yeah. Alright, so... Um, let's see, yeah, TK and Joke just set off on a Kakumon. And they just ride off into the fog. To be like, yo, hey, there must be some way out here. And, like, TK's mom is just like, hey, TK, where the F are you going on that giant walrus? And TK's like, yeah, later, mom, I love ya. <laughs> <laughs> See you around. She's like, no, get back here. And he's like, you know, Joe's like, hey, it's fine. I'm with him. You know, I'm like, I'm in sixth grade. I'll handle it. Epic <laughs> <laughs> TK's. <laughs> like, I feel so effing bad for her. <laughs> she has no idea what the F is going on at all. Yeah, TK is like five. <laughs> She's just like, no, but that thing could have so many diseases, though. It's just like, yeah, later, I'll be okay, yo, yeah, this stranger's taking care of me. <laughs> like, Joe just starts going of, like, candy and stuff, and TK's mom's like, no, don't do it. <laughs> he's just like, yeah, he's just like, yeah, later, I'll be fine. <laughs> Uh, see, so yeah, like, later the like my spawns mist is caused by something at the TV station. It's so, like Tintomon's just like, yeah, let's just destroy it then. And Izzy's like, no, don't. There might be people in there. Oh, wait, he wants to destroy what? The TV station. Oh, just the whole thing. Yeah. Okay. Like Tomon's just like, yeah, just like Lloyd Digivolve on, take this out. And he's like, no, wait. It's like, hang on. Just turn me into a big beetle monster. I got this. He's like, that. That might be where they're keeping the children. <laughs> I think like we get like. I forget when, but at some point, like, in the sub, they mention it's like, oh yeah, my Osman killed Wizardmon, and Kari feels, like, really guilty about it, as she bandages Agumon's arm that got cut by, like, Phantomon's scythe earlier. So yeah, really? Wizardmon's, like, super dead, guys, you know, he's never coming back, you know, he he drowned, it's it's over with. Oh, okay. Yeah, we, we dropped him a leg, he's done. Yeah. So yeah, we just, Epic Mega Seedramon is just randomly on the bridge, like, breaking the bridge apart. And, like, Epic Joe has to save TK from, like, drowning, and, like, that causes a Kakumon to digivolve. And, like, it turns into Zomon, which, Zomon looks so effing weird. I've never been a fan of his design at all, like, he needs more yeah. fur or something. Yeah, Zudamon's a weird one. But yeah, like, he tanks, like, effing, like, Mega Seedramon's lightning attack. Like, it's no big deal at all. It just, like, just uses his hair, just, like, knock him off the bridge, and it just works. <laughs> so, just, like, yeah, we, yeah, we did this. We've, like, opened a hole in the fog barrier. Let's go get help. And, like, there's look over, and Wizard Mods is just floating on, like, a log just in the river. <laughs> yeah, he's just like, oh, hey, I, you need to get this crest to Kari. And they're just like, oh, wow, you're still alive. <laughs> so, yeah, Wizard meanwhile, Mons. like... Just like, yeah, just threw me in the water. Yeah, he's like, you know, it's not like I can't fly or something. Alright. <laughs> so we just sort of go off, and we get this bit where it's like, um, who is it? It's like, 
Uh, yeah, I think it's like Matt and Sora specifically. Like, you're like trying to protect Kari. Maybe like Ty's there too. Yeah, and like, they just sort of end up like fighting Phantom on. And like, Phantom on just pulls out like Tuskmon and Sneemon. And they just have this Bill Bat, like this big battle in the streets. Where Phantomon is like choking Matt out with like an effing chain. And like, yo, know, like all the Digimon are just like, no, we can handle this, we got this. <laughs> like, everyone's just ready to just go and just like make this happen. And Kari's like, no, just don't. She's like, y'all, like, just take me, it's fine. Like, I don't want anyone else to hurt, dang it. And say, Kari, this is stupid. We we got this. <laughs> like they have a chain around like Ty's neck <laughs> from like an ultimate, and they're just like, "No, nah, this, this is fine. We we do this all the time." <laughs> I mean, you just have one of your Digimon attack the chain and break it. Yeah, Phantomon's strong, yo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Kari gives in to them, and they like take her away and stuff. Why they don't? Why they don't just kill her on the spot is beyond me. Yeah, and I guess there is like they won't like give her to my Osman so they can like get the credit and like confirm her identity and stuff or whatever. I guess. Yeah, yeah. I guess. I guess uh, my Osman has to confirm it. Yeah, which is still really dumb, but whatever. I guess. I mean, of all the stupid decisions that he's made, this one makes logical sense. Like, if he's not just gonna kill indiscriminately, then, you know, you at least want no, you know? Yeah. So they, like, they do that, and it's just like, oh no, how will we ever get Kari back? Like, end of episode. <laughs> like, Kari's just like, eh, it's fine, yeah, I'll see you guys later. <laughs> I'll be, right. be okay. It's fine, I'll be right back. <laughs> like, yo, Ty's just like, no, Kari, no, you're like, she's taking candy from Phantom on, just like, no, I'll be okay, it's alright. <laughs> Ty's like, no, but I might have, like, germs, and she's like, I'll be fine. <laughs> so, yeah, like, a less thoughts, I guess. Uh... Just that Phantomon should have just killed Ty right then and there. Phantomon should have killed a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, because they, they already know Ty is one of them. Yeah, my Osman should have killed Ty so hard. <laughs> like, he has no reason, like, just the plot contrivance behind, like, oh, just don't kill everyone, I just want the eighth child. And then, like, everyone else is just whatever. <laughs> Uh, like, it does have, like, the same justification as, like, Devimon did. Because, like, yeah, we have, this is gonna be, like, the second Angel Digimon. Like, we already have Holy Power. Just double up on it. Yeah, just, just double up, I guess. Just double the Holy Bar, double the strength. I mean, it worked better to kill a vampire. Yeah, than, like, booty, I mean, Holy Water. <laughs> <laughs> all right so i guess that's it then <laughs> yeah that's it all right well later <laughs> later